Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to another edition of the rotopros.com best DFS show that just happens to come out here on 8 Eastern Standard Time. My name is Rob Diamond, Rad Rob Diamond on Twitter, Sir Robert Six on all the main sites. This is an EPL breakdown for Wednesday, April 3rd, 2019. It's a little bit of a mix up of different game weeks here. What we're coming into is a part of the season where a lot of the games that were postponed earlier in the season are getting remade into the middle of the weeks here. So that's why we are seeing this weird two game, three game slates this midweek. Uh, so today we are talking about the slate for today, Wednesday, and it is a three game slate, so let's just jump into it right away. The first game on the slate, we have Brighton making the trip into London to play Chelsea. The next game in the slate we have uh, Crystal Palace making this short trip up to the north side of London to play Spurs. And the final game of the slate is we have Cardiff City making the trip up into Manchester to play Manchester City. So yeah, uh, like I said, this is a three game slate so it is pretty interesting because for the most part this is three very set in stone games that have one very obvious talented world class team and another team that really shouldn't be able to tie the boots of the other side but that being said there are still plays and there are still DFS edges that we can take going into this game week so yeah let's jump into the first game here we have Brighton traveling to Chelsea now there's going to be a few talking points I'm just going to gloss over very quickly for each team this slate there isn't too much to talk about since it is a three game slate but for the most part Brighton is one of the worst away teams in the entire league, and Chelsea is actually one of the best home teams in the entire league. Chelsea's only lost once all season, and by all definition, Brighton have lost the vast majority of their away games this season. They make their they make their success and their points at home. So right away, we know that Chelsea should be the or not only one of the more overly dominant of this slate when we look at the three favorites, but in fact probably the biggest favorite of the three teams considering their DFS edge aspect of it. Now, uh, when I say that specifically, uh, I'm targeting this slate, the Chelsea defense, goaltender, and I'm not necessarily focusing on the attack, though I think it still can be in play. Now, uh, a lot of since this is a three game slate, there's basically there it's very chalky as to what's a cash script and what's a GPP script. And I think by all definition, this slate Chelsea is the cash script, and taking some uh, Brighton is the GPP. So let's jump right through this real quickly. Uh, there isn't really much reason to take someone like Matt Ryan for the most part. What Brighton do is they sit back and they allow teams to attack and they huddle really close to defensive and they're really hard to break down and what that will cause is a lot of Chelsea uh, whether they're short passes tic-tac-toe passes which they are very good at see Chelsea isn't a big crossing team and in DFS this is usually a huge issue as in many of these sites we're looking for scoring through crossing so especially on DK there isn't as much floor as we'll see as other games but the ceiling is sky high here because what Chelsea do Brighton are susceptible to on a daily or I should say a weekly or matchly basis so yeah, for the most part, they're not going to allow a lot of shots on net, specifically any kind of a ceiling shots on net compared to the two other weaker sides. While on top of that, uh, they're still going to concede multiple goals. So yeah, I don't see a lot of reason in taking Matt Ryan as a value play this slate. Now in terms of the wingbacks, they do have some wingbacks that are interesting. The big issue for Brighton is that they don't play the best DFS options as their real, real life options. Galton Bong is an incredible DFS, low salary, low floor kind of cash play where slate by slate he'll finish with a really respectable floor, uh, floor uh, but will very rarely ever hit his ceiling but from these salaries you only need so much but as you'll also notice he hasn't played since February 26th and he's been healthy so that is a, a obvious concern as he probably won't be seeing the field and uh, the rest of the wingbacks just don't really hold the same kind of water as uh, someone like Bong does uh, for the most part they're too defensive or they are uh, just not very skilled players now someone like Montoya is half interesting because he does make a lot of his scoring through peripheral statistics uh, and someone like Bernardo is also a really interesting 3.7 low floor low salary kind of play but that being said I would rather stick with someone like Bong because his last name rules but no for real he's just a better real life option than the other players uh, but yeah I wouldn't talk you out of Bernardo he is a low floor low salary play for the slate he just isn't my favorite 
Now, in terms of the midfield, uh, it, it's a little bit tough because Knockhart is dominating the set pieces with Pastel Grobe out. The issue is that even with his domination, he really doesn't do very much as a floor. So with eight crosses, uh, ideally you're looking for double digits uh, from that, and he's barely able to get uh, over uh, a double, or excuse me, get two double digits even with those uh, mass amount of crosses. Like guys like uh, Milchevic from uh, eight crosses will easily eclipse double digits in a fantasy point score. So yeah, I just don't see a lot of reason to take Knocker, especially considering a Chelsea don't allow a lot of set pieces, and b they don't allow a lot of floor, and that's really where Knockhart needs is set pieces and Jack Labash well he is a good real life option I don't mind him for a GPP swing he comes off the field uh, Esquerdo did play 90 minutes or excuse me no it wasn't Esquerdo I was thinking of it was someone else all together sorry uh, Solly March should be playing 90 minutes but only comes on as a sub which is really disappointing because he is an incredible player both in real life and in DFS uh, Basoma has been seeing some minutes in the midfield and he's been adequate too uh, that's who I was thinking about sorry in terms of uh, seeing the 90 minutes right now uh, but yeah up front basically if you're looking to use any bright in this slate uh, you'll probably want to look at Glenn Murray and GPP. That's really it. Uh, he's playing 90 minutes, and he's repeatedly broken slates this season uh, with multiple goals against teams he probably shouldn't have been scoring against. So, yeah, I really don't mind Glenn Murray from 3.8 in GPP if you're looking for that. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, Brighton probably aren't going to score this slate. Uh, Kepa is definitely my favorite keeper option of the slate. I'll get to the other two later, but uh, needless to say, out of all all the def the defenses for this slate in terms of cash Chelsea are by far the runaway favorite uh, now, in terms of defense, with Alonso out, that means Emerson's probably going to be playing at the left back. And at 5.2K, that's an incredible discount for, for a player like Chelsea at home playing against a team like Brighton. Just across the board, probably the best defensive player of the slate. Make sure you get Emerson into your cards as long as he should be starting, but as long as he is starting. Uh, now, if you are chasing uh, the clean sheet, I don't mind uh, using someone like David Luiz as a center back in GPP or just go going with both wingbacks at the 5.2-5.3K with uh, Azpilicueta and Emerson and Kepa. I really don't mind the Chelsea defensive stack. It's definitely my favorite defensive stack for GPPs this slate uh, because it isn't that expensive. Now, I say that in terms of most slates, when we're looking at this kind of upside in terms of slate relation, you're having to pay at least 6K for one of these defenders. This slate, we're getting that kind of huge discount in Emerson at 5.2K, and I'm not sure how many people will necessarily look at this as a discount when it really is so yeah uh definitely you want to lock in emerson and, and kappa into the majority of your exposure this slate uh, now, when we go to midfield, I'm not too interested in the Chelsea midfielders. Whether it's the midfield three, don't really do too much in terms of DFS. Uh, I would like to see Loftus Cheek getting more minutes, but that won't be happening anytime soon. The big issue is that Hazard, William, and Pedro all take each other's minutes. Uh, they all three can't play at the exact same time. So one of them is going to draw the short end here and end up not playing uh, the full 90 minutes. <coughs> Excuse me. A lot of issues uh, around Pedro, uh, that being Pedro right now. Uh, but Hazard uh, is someone that, like I said, if you are looking uh, for... Uh, if you're looking for a player this slate to spend up for in GPP, that will be the lowest owned. I think Hazard makes the most sense, especially pairing him with Emerson on the left-hand side and seeing if they combine for uh, a GPP swinger goal here uh, with a goal and assist. Uh, because whenever you think of ownership, the majority of it's going to go to City and Spurs. Chelsea are going to be the lowest owned of the big three teams, so I have absolutely no issue jumping on Hazard here as my favorite high salary play in GPP. I wouldn't really necessarily suggest it for cash because they just don't do a lot in terms of crossing. Uh, Chelsea doesn't. So for a final score here, I do like it to be 2-0 Chelsea final score. I think Hazard will have at least a goal or an assist. And uh, Emerson will be looking at probably 12 to 15 fantasy points, which from 5.2K uh, can get done in either format. Kepa, my favorite keeper option this slate. So yeah, Chelsea, 2-0 final. I should also say they'll be the only clean sheet this slate. 
Next game on the slate, we have Crystal Palace traveling uh, for a really interesting London Derby here to Spurs. So here's another really interesting game. Spurs, they haven't won in five straight. Let's just get that out of the way first. Uh, so this isn't a situation here where we can say, wow, yes, right away, Spurs versus Crystal Palace. Maybe if this was the start of season last year and we were outside of August and Harry Kane was starting to score, uh, we could go, yeah, Spurs all day. Here's the thing. So if you're not necessarily fully following uh, the sport, uh, Spurs is playing in a brand new stadium. Their brand new stadium this game. Their former stadium, White Hart Lane, uh, was abandoned basically for the bigger, brighter future that uh, their new stadium is offering here. Um, I don't know how to word this without offending Spurs fans, so if you're a Spurs fan, I'm sorry. I'm going to insult you slightly here not you personally but Spurs are kind of fake they do things and they necessarily don't follow through because they do things for the, for the wrong reasons and a lot of that can be focused right now on this new arena um it has been delayed basically it was supposed to be open for the start of the season we're finally getting it now delays after delays after delays uh, it's been an, an embarrassment. They have, they literally have no transfer budget. Literally no transfer budget because of this stadium that was supposed to be operational at the start of the season. So they've lost out on all these, all this new money throughout the entire season. So Spurs is basically uh, building for the future here, starting a brand new and. Crystal Palace, you don't have to know uh, too much about the sport to know Crystal Palace is notoriously like a bad team. They aren't playing very badly right now, but in terms of just like the general DFS history of Crystal Palace, they're usually like the team you go against because they're going to lose 6 0. Uh, so, yeah, I just think it's really funny that another London side of all the London sides, other than Arsenal, if it was Arsenal going in and winning, that wouldn't be as hilarious because Crystal Palace are just bad and it'll be a horrible moment for Spurs there I got it out of the way I gave my little Spurs rant that will kind of add some uh, unnecessary minutes here to a three game slate but yeah let's just get back into the game here Spurs hasn't won in five straight games they just aren't playing well enough right now to deserve uh, any kind of DFS respect, even in a three-game slate. Now, when I say these things, that doesn't necessarily mean this is what's going to happen. As always, it's DFS. Anything can happen. Spurs, City, both could get the clean sheet, and Chelsea could let in two. It, it, like, anything could happen. But in terms of what everyone's going to expect to happen is that Spurs and City will both get clean sheets, and they probably both won't. So, um, yeah, it, it's a situation here where we're looking at Crystal Palace, and you're wondering how well can they do. And of the value keepers this slate, Guayada is by far my favorite. Is he, I prefer Kepa over him almost 10 times out of 10. But if you are going to go the value keeper this slate, no question Guayada is the way to go. Now, not only is Crystal Palace a far, far, far better team away from home than they are at home this season, they just generally score goals like ham when they're away from home uh they have a crazy average of like three goals a game away going right now in their past like whatever 10 games or something so yeah this isn't a game to sleep on crystal palace just think back a few weeks ago where they're at they're at liverpool and they scored goals like they're go they really should score goals this night they really should and i think there's lots of different options that you can roll with now uh juan binsaka is a huge interest to me this slate at 3.9k mostly because again he's another one of these players that gets all of his defensive pre his scoring from defensive peripheral stats and uh, even against the biggest sides, which only offer players defensive peripheral stats, he still puts up reasonable floors. Uh, so if he happens to surprise a lot of the ownership, like what I love about this slate, what I love about this slate is it's set up to really counteract a lot of ownership. So if you take Juan Binsaka, a lot of the ownership is, Anytime you get points with him is just going to counter the other team, other ownerships because they're going to lose ownership or lose points from his points. Uh, whether that's 
uh, Crystal Palace getting a clean sheet and uh, Spurs not getting a clean sheet, or Crystal Palace getting a clean sheet and Spurs' ownership on the attack, which should be massive this late, getting no goals. Uh, Spurs allowing low scoring and having a high defensive score uh, takes away from Spurs' really high ownership. There's just going to be so much ownership this late that there's going to be a lot of edges uh, just by taking the other side. So uh, in th this situation here with Juan Vinsaka, he's going to get a lot of high defensive peripheral scores. And as long as Spurs don't do really well on the attack, he should by default do well. And considering by default he does well as is against really good teams, I'm expecting a little bit better than the five point whatever, uh, closer to seven to eight fantasy points probably this slate. Uh, and from 3.9, that's really, that's flames. So do not sleep on Juan Minsaka this slate. Uh, now, in terms of uh, the rest of them at the back, it's tough because uh, th th there's minutes concerns, especially this time of year where they're going to be playing again on the weekend. So, uh, yeah, it, it will be interesting to see how they line up, but Juan Minsaka is definitely in my wheelhouse this slate from 3.9K. Now, in the midfield, um, you could roll with Milicevic if you want in either format. Cash, he's viable from 6.9K. And GPP, is going to be just as more viable. If you've been sleeping all season and you haven't noticed, Milicevic leads the league in penalty shot goals over the past two seasons. I think he's got 17 or 18 now, all of them penalty shot goals. So, legitimately... Palace play for penalty shots. That's how they do it. That's how he scores his goals, and he's doing lots of it. Back-to-back -back games worth of it, mind you. So uh, it's taking a lot of the set pieces. Just don't sleep in Milicevic. I call him Millie. Uh, don't sleep in Millie. One guy I would sleep on this slate is uh, Andros Townsend from uh, 7.3K. His minutes have been extremely concerning for me in enough consistent slates where I'm just going to be fading him in the hopes that someone trying to be sharp on being different will land on him instead of Millie. And Millie is just by far the better option. Now, in terms of GPP, there are very few less uh uh, let's just say it this way. I love Zaha this way for GPP. Probably one of my favorite GPP plays across the board. From 7.5K, he's just an excellent player. He tends to step up in these types of games. Uh, and he excellent game on the weekend. Excellent form. Everything's clicking right now for Zaha. And I don't think his ownership nor his salary will properly represent, uh, especially in GPP. So don't be afraid to get some Zaha into your GPPs this slate. And up front, as always, just fade them, uh, whether they're not very good or they're not getting 90 minutes, one or the other. So, uh, yeah, you don't really have to worry about the Palace forwards. Focus on the midfields, whether it's Zaha or Milicevic. Uh, I like either of them, but uh, Juan Binsaka is someone you're probably going to want into your cash cards if he's getting the start this slate. Now jumping over to Spurs, as I mentioned, uh, they're conceding at a high rate, they're winless in five straight, and they're just not deserving of the salary nor the ownership that they will receive and are receiving this slate. So I have no interest in Loris, simple enough for either format. Uh, you could talk me into some uh, Kieran Trippier. I don't mind him, especially from 5.8K. Uh, Palace allows a lot of crosses, so uh, I'm not necessarily sleeping on Trippier. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how they do line up, though. Uh, so if it is Kyle Walker-Peters, I'm really not interested from 6K. But I'll definitely take the pedigree of Kieran Trippier from 5.8K. Uh, and I'd probably keep it to cash. His ownership's probably just going to be too high in GP and I don't necessarily see a ceiling with that clean sheet I don't necessarily see happening. Now in the midfield I think you could get away with Christian Eriksen at 8.5k. I do prefer others uh, from a better discounted options uh, but if you are looking to play some uh, Christian Eriksen in cash I don't mind it. GPP the only real way you're going to be able to play Spurs and GPP to manipulate the ownership is to play them all. Literally play Eriksen, Son, Harry Kane and probably Adele Ali as well and then you're you're gutting yourself for the rest of the way like you're you're going to have to go value town the rest of the plays uh and in particular value town on a keeper that's probably letting in at least two goals uh so if that doesn't work out you're going to crash and burn really bad so yeah I, you could play some Erickson in cash uh I'd prefer Hazard over Harry Kane just because I think 
Harry Kane doesn't necessarily have the floor that will represent his salary nor ceiling from this slate, uh, and nor does he uh, have, uh, or excuse me, his ownership will be too high. Now, a quick peek shows that he's actually been playing fairly well away from home, so I don't like super hate it, but uh, in terms of uh, the ultimate fade, uh, Harry Kane isn't that player of the slate for me. Uh, I'll be looking at him a tiny bit, uh, probably in some GPPs. Like I said, stacked. The thing with Harry Kane is you have to stack him with someone else. You don't have the option. You have to. Uh, because literally all he does is either takes penalty shots or is 100% reliant on another player giving him the ball for a scoring opportunity. Uh, so yeah, in terms of a final score, I could see 2-1 either way, uh, maybe Spurs, maybe Palace, but what my hope here is that 0-0 uh, zero, zero draw or a one nothing Palace win and Palace steal it late with a Wilfred Zaha goal. So that's what I'm going to say, 2-1 either way, but uh, I'm shooting for a one nothing Palace victory. Final game on the slate, we have Cardiff City traveling to Manchester City. Uh, and by all definition, this is uh, the second worst team in the league playing probably the second best team, if not the best team in the league. You go either way with that. The thing with uh, City, though, that you have to be worried about is they tend to concede a fair amount when they're at home. I don't know why this is, uh, but it just so happens that they, they concede more goals at home than they do when they are away. So that's just something to remember here when you are building. Uh, is it Kepa or is it Ederson? You can definitely play some Ederson. He isn't the worst. I think Loris is the worst. Uh, but in terms of the better, I'd rather take the salary discount on Kepa with the less ownership uh, and hopefully a higher ceiling for more shots than uh, Cardiff will put on net. Uh, so yeah, uh, l let's look at Cardiff quickly. Etheridge is just too much of a risk because City is just too awesome. Uh, if you're not taking Juan Binsaka, the next favorite uh, low salary, uh, low floor option for me is definitely Joe Bennett uh, playing on Cardiff at only 3.4K. Uh, he is doing more than enough against all sorts of different teams to put up at least five to six fantasy points and has done it consistently all season. Is he going to get you double digits? No. Do you need double digits? No. He costs 3.8K. If you're even looking to, or 3.4K, excuse me, uh, don't even be afraid to play both, uh, both, excuse me, Juan Binsaka and Joe Bennett together with Emerson in either format and just try to catch six to eight fantasy points from the pair of them, which will set you up with roughly 15 fantasy points, which from six points, or I should say seven points, uh, three. Uh, you're wanting ideally 20, so you're a little shy, but uh, if uh, you manage to hit a proper ceiling on a three-game slate, you really don't have to worry about too much else. Uh, so yeah, uh, I guess really we want eight to nine fantasy points from the pair of them. Uh, that would be super ideal, and I don't think that's like super out of the question, but on a three-game slate... There's only so many guys you can take, and they're two of the three low low floor, low salary defensive options for this slate. Uh, now going into the midfield, uh, I'm really in love with Camaras of the slate at 4.8k. The thing is that it's just too cheap, just too cheap. Across the board, he checks all the boxes to be a proper cash play. He plays 90 minutes. He handles the set pieces. He has a decent floor. He can put balls in the net. He can make assists. He takes shots. He draws fouls. He does everything that you need. So in terms of, like, if you're looking at it on paper, you're going to want to fade Cardiff 100%. But uh, in terms of DFS, uh, you're probably going to want to get Camarasa into your cards from 4.8K. That's going to open up the different doors that will allow the city and the Chelsea and even the Spurs salaries. Finally, up front, uh, simple fades across the board. I There are, you know, like I don't hate uh, Bobby Reed if he can see 90 minutes, uh, which is kind of an issue. Uh, but with Patterson out, someone here is going to see a step up in minutes. It's just something to remember. Uh, but in terms of uh, the, the main issue with Cardiff is their minutes. They sub everyone off. So I'm not necessarily too interested in, in anyone outside of Camarasa and uh, Joe Bennett as uh, both really decent low floor, low salary plays. Now, 
finally, on Man City, like I said, uh, they concede more at home than they do away, though they do tend to still win, uh, considering I don't think they've lost a game at home this season, maybe once. Uh, I'm not interested in their wingbacks, mostly because they don't really cross the ball enough. Danilo isn't the worst idea in the entire world if you can get 90 minutes from him. But City have a huge game coming up here on the weekend uh, for the FA Cup, and it's expected that they're going to be uh, resting a lot of guys. So it wouldn't surprise me to see uh, even uh, someone like, uh, where is he, uh, Zenchenko, uh, getting the start at left back, uh, or uh, even Fabian Delph, someone rather irrelevant, let's put it that way. Uh, now, I do don't always uh, mind Laporte, especially if you can get a showdown slate. Uh, you always want Laporte in there. Uh, but in terms, you really want to start paying attention to the midfield and figure out what you really want to do. Uh, Sané is probably really the viable guy for cash. I don't mind Sterling. I think uh, you can roll with him in either format and just chase pure ceiling. It's a three-game slate, so you're not really risking too much. Uh, but... The main guy you want this slate is Gabriel Jesus from 8.9K. No question with um, Aguero out, uh, Jesus should be looking at 90 minutes. And if he isn't, uh, he he won't start in that case. And Sterling will be getting the, guy, the role up front and be playing uh, hopefully the 90 minutes. So chase either Jesus or Sterling. Uh, take them both in GPP. Or uh, if you want, just take either Mares or Sane in uh, your cash uh, and uh, use either or uh, for whichever one of those two is starting. Uh, so mainly Sterling, Jesus, GPP, uh, Mares, Sane, cash, whichever one of those two starts. And that's really my strategy for there. Um, probably 3-1, 4-1 classic city game but the big thing here is that i think city is going to concede making chelsea the top defensive options for this slate so yeah this is probably a pretty good start for a card uh the forward's pretty debatable you can make it uh even if you want uh i don't necessarily like hazard uh for cash but if you're asking me uh which uh, i prefer uh it's tough because now uh, DraftKings has uh, Hazard as strictly a midfielder. So you can't roll him as a forward like the different uh, city options. So yeah, it's tough, but uh, that last expensive uh, is still debatable and you can still put in two fairly expensive guys with that. So yeah, uh, I hope everyone enjoyed this three-game slate breakdown. Rotopros.com, get over, check us out. Check out the content tab, or I guess it would maybe this side for you <laughs> top right uh hand corner articles drop down we got lots of free content check us out sign up get in, get involved in our slack community uh, my name is rob diamond rad rob diamond on twitter sir robert six and all the main sites thanks a lot for tuning in everyone good luck and hopefully see you at the top take care